With me today, I have Effie van der Harst, um, the former project lead of iShare, who currently works at InnoPay Consultancy. Effie, the floor is yours. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity to share a bit about iShare. Great to, to have this conversation. In general, I would like to discuss more about your project iShare and to understand more how it came to be, what was it like on the drawing board and how has it come about and evolved since then and to discuss a bit on the legal and technical framework and aspects around it and what you yourself see for data sharing beyond iShare and your work at InnoPay. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, it, it, it has an interesting history, um, the, the creation of iShare. Uh, I think the logistics sector um, has been struggling a bit with um, um, creating efficiency gains and um, yeah, making their operation in the supply chain smoother. And um, I think in the sector and also at the Dutch government, people over the past few years thought about how to crack this nut and how to, um, yeah, to, to get the Dutch logistics sector to a higher maturity level. Uh, so at some point, uh, the Dutch top sector logistics uh, asked uh, a question to the market, um, help us to improve data sharing in the logistics sector, because they thought, well, if we can share data uh, in a supply chain between parties, uh, then we must be able to realize efficiency gains. Uh, but uh, for some reason, um, this, w this wasn't happening. And of course, we all know that competition is increasing and there's uh, uh, congestion problems uh, in, in Dutch traffic. So uh, there, there's an urgency also to, uh, to improve the supply chain and to make things more efficient. Um, so um, yeah, there was a request to the markets, how can we solve this data sharing puzzle for the logistics sector? Um, and uh, by that time, I think that was 2016, people were thinking about, can we create one central platform where we can put all our uh, data about uh, freight going from A to B, uh, and make sure that, that organizations can access that data from a central place. And at that point, InnoPay, uh, a consultancy firm in, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, specialized in digital transactions, um, stepped in and said, well, maybe one central platform isn't that uh, a good idea. Because um, yeah, if you put all the data, which is often very commercially sensitive, uh, in one central platform, how will you ever um, yeah, get enough participants and parties to join? Because um, yeah, there, there's really a trust issue there. Yeah, people and organizations are very careful in uh, who they want to share their data with, and, and rightfully so. Uh, so uh, we suggested to the top sector logistics to not create one central platform, but instead create a trust framework that facilitates um, yeah, logistics companies uh, to keep data at the source as much as possible and to keep it under the control of entitled parties so um, they can decide uh, what data is shared with whom, under what conditions um, and for what purpose. And uh, that concept or that ID uh, resonated in the sector uh, so I think in 2017, uh, we got the opportunity to, uh, to guide the logistics sector and to co-create a trust framework together with uh, about 20 organizations uh, from the sector. So that is uh, a bit of a history of how it all started. Okay, thank you. And to highlight, what was the... So there's a lot of... Um, information in there, one being why not to go with one platform, why this trust framework was created, mm -hmm. and how these um, 20 plus organizations are sharing data with each other through this framework. Mm -hmm. And what has it become more concretely since the drawing board, now that it's been, um, now that iShare has been ongoing for a while now, mm -hmm. how has it evolved until when you were, until when you were last managing the project? I think uh, in, in 2017, 
uh, we uh, started a co-creation process with uh, logistics organizations of, of different sizes and public-private uh, sector mm -hmm. uh, to, to first sit around uh, or stand around the drawing board and to decide on uh, yeah, what is the generic requirements uh, or what is a generic set of requirements for um, yeah, all kinds of logistics organizations. So regardless of their size or their uh, modality, uh, if it's either air uh, or rail or road, uh, uh, no matter what kind of logistics organizations you are, you need to be able to share data with other parties in supply chains. And uh, uh, yeah, at that point, we decided also to keep the scope of the iShares Trust Framework uh, very limited. Yeah, so we, we didn't want to go into data standards or semantics of data um, because that is also very um, domain specific. And we wanted to create a generic infrastructure that is feasible for all kinds of organizations. So we decided to focus on a limited scope uh, of identification, uh, who are you, uh, authentication, how do you prove that it's you, uh, if it's either a, a truck driver uh, representing a company or if it is an ERP system that uh, operates on behalf of a company. Uh, and then finally also authorization. So how can systems and organizations decide in an online context um, that you are authorized to access or publish certain data uh, because they know it's really you. And so the, we decided to keep the scope very limited and only focus on yeah, sort of uh, the trust factor um, that, that now is very limiting organization uh, or is limiting organizations to share data. You really need to know who is on the other side of the line before you um, uh, feel, com feel comfortable enough to share data with others. Yeah, trust is a very big factor in not just businesses and um, governments, but in ev for everyone on how on the aspect or on the concept of data sharing. And it's something that motivates or limits or even prevents people from entering these kind of things. Yeah, and, and the, the funny thing is that uh, organizations, if you talk about iShare or data sharing, more conceptually, everybody understands that you can create efficiency gains uh, if you share data. Yep. Yeah, but uh, still people uh, or organizations tend to keep data to themselves yep. because of yeah, trust issues and also interoperability issues. Mm -hmm. But then can you give examples of some of the 20 companies that are involved in iShare from where some names or from where they come from? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, the, the core group of organizations that, that started the co-creation process of iShare uh, come from the Netherlands uh, because it's also a Dutch uh, government fun funded project. So, for example, uh, we had uh, Dutch Customs involved, we had um, Portbase involved, which is a, a large uh, IT platform that operates in the in Rotterdam uh, port community. Uh, Cargonaut, which is sort of a similar organization, but that uh, covers the IT for um, air freight at uh, Schiphol Airport. Um, but also uh, other companies like Secure Logistics, who is specialized in um, identification of truck drivers. Uh, they, they, um, they issue, uh, yeah, um, uh, a smart card to truck drivers, uh, which they can use to authenticate themselves uh, in the Rotterdam uh, port community, for example, when they enter, for example, uh, a terminal. Okay. And also ECT, which is uh, uh, the container terminal in Rotterdam, uh, is also involved. But uh, yeah, many others. Um, That's only touching upon them, yeah. Yeah. Can you give concrete examples of why um, organizations should use um, frameworks such as iShare? What benefits, what practical benefits do they get from it? And why should more organizations be looking into something similar? 
I think in general, if you uh, use standards um, yeah, that creates interoperability and that makes it much more uh, efficient and easy to create new connections with uh, multiple parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we come from a world where organizations tend to have uh, very um, unique and specialized connections with others. Uh, which creates sort of a spaghetti of different connections. And that's very difficult to maintain and to, cre to keep it secure. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to uh, work with international open standards uh, because it, it makes it much easier to connect and to integrate systems uh, with other parties and also to keep them secure. And that, that's also very, very important. So it's not only about the first connection and getting trans data transactions going, but also looking at the future perspective. You need to ma maintain those connections and make sure that they are secure so only people who need access and uh, are authorized can have that access. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And now moving more towards the legal and technical aspect behind iShare. Well, may maybe it's good if I, I can add a bit more on that. Yes, uh, yes. Because the what's the alternative of you using standards is, is doing things yourself <laughs> and, uh, and, and what, yeah, creating that spaghetti or, uh, and that uh, uh, will limit you going forward in um, creating your efficiency gains and uh, being flexible and being able to adapt to uh, yeah. changing circumstances in your market. Yeah, and it might not be compatible or easily um, aligned with other parties or organizations that you want to create or maintain connections with. Yes. That's actually a big topic in and of itself, and people can have long conversations just discussing standards. Yeah, yeah. indeed. <laughs> long uh, conversations, and not only about technical aspects, but you, you already started a bit about it. It's also about the legal aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, under what conditions can you share data? Uh, and uh, yeah, what if things go wrong? Uh, uh, yeah, what kind of uh, safety net have we created to, um, yeah, to, sure to, to correct that or um, um, to make sure the data or at least people that have handled are not only well, to use the word accountable for, um, and we know who was responsible, accountable for it, and the process in the supply chain, but also so it's um, clear enough <coughs> to build the trust between the different parties that this is being done correctly, that your, the data is not being mismanaged or misused. Yes, indeed. Does iShare use um, or encourage the organizations involved to use specific licensing or legal standards when sharing data with each other? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, that's a very important part of iShare. So all participants that join iShare uh, need to sign uh, an accession agreement with the iShare Foundation. And that means that all participants uh, can be held to the same agreements and they don't need to make separate bilateral agreements with other participants. Mm -hmm. So by signing one contract with the scheme owner, the iShare Foundation, they in fact uh, are bound to the same contract with other participants. Okay. And looking into the licensing part, uh, iShare uh, has um, standardized a few licenses that uh, organizations uh, can use to, in a data transaction, uh, provide instructions on how a service may be consumed or under which conditions data is exchanged. And these instructions or conditions are called licenses. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, they provide a uh, possibility to state what it is, uh, uh, what is and what is not allowed with the data. So, for example, you can say there are no limitations on sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can say it's for internal use only. Mm -hmm. Or it is for non-commercial use. Uh, it, it, it cannot be used to generate revenue. So this is all um, standardized under iShare and that's all also uh, translated into technical specifications so that on a technical level and in a data transaction, you can express uh, to the other party uh, under what conditions the data can be shared and if it can be reshared with others.
that was quite a nice big um, summary on the legal and you touched upon quite well the technical aspects. Is there anything further you'd like to discuss with iShares legal or technical um, terms and conditions or standards? Well, it's, it's important to know that iShare um, is uh, in the design phase. Um, we decided also to reuse as much as possible. So because and that's the thing with standards, uh, uh, you, you tend to use and design new standards, mm -hmm. which is not um, from an interoperability perspective, uh, a good, uh, good idea. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the guiding principles was also to leverage existing international building blocks as much as possible and not redo everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's it's merely uh, combining uh, things cleverly that are already out there, mm -hmm. yeah, and we wanted. Um, yeah, so, for example, I, I told you that iShare has a limited scope of identification, authentication, and authorization. Mm -hmm. Well, in Europe, we already have in the public domain the EIDAS Trust Framework. Um, yeah, so, uh, in data exchange with governments. Uh, the EIDAS uh, norms are applicable mm -hmm. and we decided that uh, in the logistics sector that would also be a very suitable framework to use to decide what is um, for example the assurance level of an identity that uh, tries to access your service. Mm -hmm. Another question on my side, are the organizations involved facing or did they face any technical challenges when they were sharing their data or and did you receive a um, separate question but also in terms of the other organizations, were there any, was there any resistance to the legal standards and the, signing the agreement that Aisha provides in terms of sharing data? I wouldn't call it resistance but of course organizations do need to um, uh, change a bit from how they operate now mm -hmm. and that's always difficult mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, and looking at the technical specifications if you put in your time and effort and your development capacity uh, that uh, of people that are familiar with open international standards like OAuth like OpenID Connect uh, then it's not that difficult uh, to uh, make your own uh, iShare enabled connections. But of course, it takes time and effort. So what we've done is also create a developer portal with example code and a GitHub repository, for example, where we publish open source snippets of code so mm -hmm. that uh, organizations that want to join iShare don't need to start from scratch but can uh, use existing building blocks to, to speed up and accelerate their implementation. Yeah. And then of course, eh, when the technical stuff uh, works, then you uh, yeah, always need to make sure that organizations understand the trust framework and the legal concept behind it. Uh, and for some organizations, that is um, uh, something to get used to and to discuss also with their legal people and, uh, uh, before they sign the agreement. Yeah, but once you do that and when you have that conversations, uh, it becomes very clear that, in fact, it's, um, it creates a lot of efficiency gains if you sign that contract once with the scheme owner uh, and, and not having to do, redo that with every partner in your supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, uh, it could be an infinite number of partners that you can exchange data with. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you have to discuss legal agreements with them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you won't be able to focus on your, your core business with uh, yeah, doing logistics <laughs> and improving uh, your supply chain. Yeah. Um, and thinking back to the earlier question also, are the organizations involved, do they face any technical challenges when they started sharing their data with each other. Well, uh, I think uh, the technical challenges um, that they come across, uh, and usually they start with a proof of concept and, and, and a, a small pilot to test uh, how their implementation works and, and, and uh, what it enables. 
uh, what it does make visible at some point is that maybe the data quality is not um, at the right level. Yeah. So I think uh, it's, it's sort of a trigger. Um, uh, so it's not the, the technical part that is the challenge. It's more the operational part or uh, the business part of data sharing where it becomes visible that data quality is not uh, sufficient, mm -hmm. yeah, then there's no use. It's, it's a bit silly to share data uh, that is not of the right quality, right? Because then it's garbage in, garbage out, mm -hmm. and it will not enhance your uh, supply chain. It will only bother your uh, supply chain. So, yeah. Um, but I think it's very good that, that this... Um, so it's sort of a side effect, I think, of, of, of iShare. The data quality improves uh, once data is shared uh, under the iShare framework. It's a good added bonus. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Something we didn't foresee, I think, in the, <laughs> at the beginning, but uh, th that is indeed what happens. No, that's a, a very good thing to happen because the improvement of quality, the quality of their data doesn't just help with the iShare, but also helps them internally with um, in case they want for if they need additional analysis or insight into something. Yes, indeed. So for everyone, it's just amazing. Um, but to wrap up, is there anything important um, that you feel that we didn't discuss and would like to add? Yeah, maybe we should uh, should have discussed this at the beginning, but may, I'm not sure if that is, is clear to the audience as well, that iShare uh, has no central infrastructure. Okay. Um, uh, I think I said it in my introduction, mm -hmm. and we wanted to keep uh, data decentralized at the source and make sure that it is only uh, shared under uh, the control of the entitled parties. Mm -hmm. And so again, iShare is uh, not a platform. It is not a blockchain, for example. Uh, it doesn't have any central infrastructures uh, besides have, uh, maintaining a list of participants. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, people and organizations that have proven that they conform to all the operational and technical uh, and legal uh, specifications. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is a very lightweight um concept actually um and uh i share doesn't see any of the data that is being exchanged between parties mm -hmm. so i think that's very important to understand that uh i'll add that to and, the and it's probably also maybe uh one of the success factors or uh, of i share uh, that the participants understand that they can join i share and that they are uh, in the driver's seat uh, and can decide themselves with uh, which other parties they can share their data with. And then stepping out from your role in InnoPay and iShare, what do you see for data sharing across Europe and the world going forward? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. That's, yeah. that's a, sort of a philosophical, uh, a philosophical, uh, philosophical question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, um, well, this is this is just the beginning. Uh, organizations start to uh, realize that uh, in order to stay competitive and to um, increase their efficiency, they need to share data. Uh, so it's inevitable that they they will continue to do so and look for ways to do that in a secure way. Um, I think what's, what's a good development, I think, in uh, especially Europe, is that we've come uh, a bit more uh, critical about the dominance of uh, platforms and uh, centralizing data. So I think iShare uh, perfectly fits in the yeah, momentum that we have in Europe at the moment about data sovereignty and keeping data decentralized and making sure that only data uh, is shared under uh, the control of entitled parties. And it's very important uh, that uh, people and businesses stay in control of their data and there will not be one or two dominant uh, platforms that uh, yeah, 
gather the data of all uh, and, and, and decide uh, what happens with it. Yeah. To use Lord of the Ring reference, no one ring to guide them all. Mm, yeah. <laughs> But then thank you very much, Effia, for explaining and, elabor and elaborating what iShare is with us and for delving into it. And I look forward to the con talking to your to the head of iShare Foundation now, Gerard, more about what iShare is doing and future steps. You're, you're more than welcome. <laughs>